Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Textron Aviation kills off Cessna TTX, Gamma presents 2017 year-end aircraft shipments and billings, and Bronco 2 aircraft launched for the U.S. market. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's February 23rd, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Textron Aviation has apparently ended production of the Cessna TTX airplane, though the company has not officially confirmed or denied that it has made the move, or even responded to our questions. A&M became aware of the situation following an email from a reader, saying that all information about the airplane had been removed from the company's website, which a quick check on the internet confirmed. The scrubbing has been thorough, with a search of the TTX on the company's website returning no results. We sent an email to Textron Corporate Communications, which has not responded to our inquiry. The TTX began life as the Columbia 300, which had been derived from the Lancer ES Kid aircraft. Cessna first marketed the TTX as the Corvallis TT in 2009. Cessna made several improvements to the airplane which was rebranded the TTX and introduced at Sudden Fun in 2011. A Fiki package was added in 2012. The airplane carried a base price of $715,000, but as of now, the fate of the airplane is in limbo at best. After the break, NTSB recommends changes in FAA airliner evacuation procedures. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115-horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. When an American Airlines Boeing 767 suffered an incident on takeoff in 2016, all passengers and crew were evacuated safely, though 20 suffered minor injuries with one man breaking several bones. Multiple passengers failed to follow instructions, and several tried to retrieve their baggage from the airplane. NTSB Chairman Robert Sumwalt said that although everyone was successfully evacuated, the investigation revealed ways the evacuation could have been improved. The board has since made a series of recommendations for the FAA to revise its airline evacuation procedure. The commemorative Air Force Red Tail Squadron is holding a live webinar and conference call with Tuskegee Airmen pilot Dr. Harold Brown, Wednesday, February 28th at 1900 Eastern Time. CAF Red Tail Squadron leader Doug Rosendell will lead the event. Register now and reserve your spot at redtail.org. This free live event will feature Dr. Brown's inspirational story in his own words. Final assembly of the first HH-60W combat rescue helicopter, which will bring unprecedented capability enhancements to the U.S. Air Force rescue mission, has gotten underway. The timing of final assembly supports the program's accelerated schedule and positions the aircraft's first flight for the end of this year, two months ahead of schedule. Free Flight Systems has announced the company's 1203C SVAS GNSS sensor is now approved for installation with Rockwell Collins' latest TDR-9494D transponder variant. Rockwell Collins has received FAA approval of an approved model list supplemental type certificate for ADSB out installations across a wide range of Part 23 Class 3 and 4 aircraft with an additional Part 25 certification coming later in 2018. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. 
Gamma has released 2017 year-end aircraft shipment and billing numbers at its annual State of the Industry press conference. Gamma Chairman Phil Straub, Executive Vice President and Managing Director of Garmin Aviation, announced that airplane shipments globally increased 2.5 percent, from 2,268 units in 2016 to 2,324 units in 2017, from same reporting companies. Conversely, airplane billings declined 4.2 percent from $21.1 billion to $20.2 billion. Worldwide, rotorcraft shipments rose 7.5 percent from 861 units in 2016 to 926 units in 2017. Rotorcraft billings increased by 1.4 percent from $3.6 billion in 2016 to $3.7 billion in 2017. Notable from these numbers is that the rotorcraft segment stabilized after several years of declining deliveries. Piston rotorcraft experienced the largest increase of all segments, at 264 unit deliveries compared to 224 in 2016, a 17.9% increase. Business jet airplane deliveries grew slightly by 1.3%, rising from 667 to 676 units. Driving this growth are the several new aircraft models that entered into service in 2017. Turboprop deliveries slowed down to 563 airplanes compared to 582 deliveries in 2016, a 3.3% decline, while piston airplane shipments strengthened by 6.5% to 1,085 units. After these messages, Bronco 2 aircraft launched for the U.S. market. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. Bronco Combat Systems USA has introduced the Bronco 2 aircraft, which is a two-crew C4 ISR and precision strike aircraft, capable of carrying a wide range of weapons, sensors and systems, and extended airborne mission operations. This aircraft is a real game changer for the warfighter. It is unique in that it has been designed specifically as a light attack and ISR platform from the onset said Paramount Group International Chairman Ivor Ichikowitz. This is not simply an armed variant of a civilian crop duster or a modified training aircraft. Every inch of this aircraft is designed for purpose, specifically for the kind of asymmetrical warfare that sophisticated military forces are now being asked to conduct. These missions demand rapidly deployable hybrid ISR and close air support capabilities, for which no other platform has been specifically designed. This aircraft is a completely clean sheet next generation design, using the latest CATIA and digital design systems, specifically for digital production, said Dr. Paul Potkiter, the CEO of the Aerospace Development Corporation, which designed the aircraft. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is currently on our winter schedule and is streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Have a great weekend and see you Monday.